How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch, back with another review. Today it's an arcade racer, Rise Race the Future. I'm going to get into this one, check it out and see if it's worth your time and investment. Let's get into it. If there's one thing I do miss, it's arcade racers, but Rise Race the Future is aiming to bring that slice of 90s arcade action back. Now, I love the days of games like Ridge Racer and Sega Rally. Rise Race of Future is, well, you guessed it, set in the future with futuristic cars, which have special types of wheels allowing its cars to traverse dirt, tarmac, and even water, mixing in a lot of my favorite types of environments in one game. I do love water races, but can this be a jack of all trades or a master of none? Let's find out. Now the game does keep things rather simple with its menu, which I do like. There is no massive amount of options when selecting vehicles. In fact, you have two to choose from from the beginning, slightly differing stats, and then it's up to you as to whether you take to challenge mode, time trial, or championship mode. Now championship mode has 64 races to take part in and eight differing championships, all slightly different from each other, but in essence, you want to finish as high as possible at the end of a number of tracks, each race assigning a number of points to you dependent on where you finish, of course. There's no career mode as such, and there's no coin to upgrade those cars. And while I do miss that a little, this is a pure arcade racer, so it's nice to go back to that simplicity. Challenge mode is quite tough in there is a number of challenges to complete over a number of seasons. Complete season one and you unlock a new vehicle. Season two unlocks another and so forth. Within each season, there are a number of challenges with 64 in total. Each is different. In that one, you may need to complete a race in a certain time and not be overtaken for a whole race or not use any boost to win. It can be tough, a little grindy at times, utterly frustrating at others, but perseverance will get you those new vehicles and that's the aim. For me, these are the two main modes. There's also time attack with a ghost if that's your kind of thing. In terms of the game and how it feels, the controls are simple in that you have your brakes, acceleration and boost. The car's physics for the most part feel good and I liked how the car transitions between tarmac and water for example, futuristic indeed. And they also handle well and feel tight. However, for me the change between water and tarmac felt like there needed to be a bit more resistance when controlling the vehicle over water. Somehow felt too light and not quite right and this is where I commend the developer for trying something a little different but more work for me is needed in the physics of those vehicles especially when they hit the water. Don't get me wrong it's still really fun and you have that one more go feeling with this game but it is a criticism I could not shake. Racing against AI feels a little bit robotic at times, but if you crash, forget about winning, you may as well restart because it seems impossible to catch them once they get a little bit too far ahead. And it's only one real mistake that's needed for this to happen. There are three differing boost modes, which I do enjoy. You can play, and I liked having that option. You can either have boost to recharge as you stay over a certain speed, or have it recharge the more power slides you do, for example. Power sliding, like in Sega Rally, feels good and is key to winning many of the races. The track's designs are nice enough and are quite varied for an indie game. There are some nice wide sections where you can to a certain extent choose the quickest route. Tracks will be reversed too and in total there's four worlds with three differing track types, some being quick, others twisty and some with a combination of both twists and straights. There's also differing ambience types from rain, sun, fog and even snow and I hope in future though there is an online mode to be added and some online leaderboards to really keep me glued getting better times against friends. It's also missing a local two player mode which is a really big miss for me as I would have loved to play this with a friend. Again the dev has committed to bringing more updates so let's hope these can be included. In terms of audio, this was one of the biggest letdowns for me in this game. And while the generic background rock is okay, it got a little bit grating after a while. And that's a shame. There's nothing really memorable here. When I play a car game like this, there are two ways I like to play. Either with no music, so I can hear the sound of those engines, or with music. And if I choose to play with music, I want something nice to listen to. The best thing about the sound, though, was the cars, especially when boosting and listening to the whistling of those turbos. In terms of visuals and performance, this is where the game really shines. The car's designs look absolutely fantastic. I'm not going to spoil them because there's only 10 to unlock and you'll have to work hard to get them, but they look great. The tracks themselves look 
awesome with the effects, differing settings, water effects and just how gorgeous they look overall. I have to commend the developer here with the visual appeal of the game. It looks so inviting, runs lovely and smooth in both handheld and docked. There's also five different camera angles that you can choose from a first person perspective or from behind the car. I certainly prefer playing in a first person perspective. It just felt more accurate when driving. It has a value, the game is $16.49 for our friends in the US. In Europe, it's €17.99, and in the UK, it's £16. Now, for the price of this game, you can really get good value out of the challenges and all the races. It will take you a good amount of time to complete. The longevity for me suffers with a lack of other modes to allow you to play with friends, such as the two-player mode, which I mentioned. There's no split screen here. It would have been nice for some sort of local play, and ultimately, if we've got online mode at some point, that's going to be a really great feature, but at the moment, it's a letdown, especially at this price point. My verdict then is Rise Race the Future is a good game, but it is lacking in a few areas to make it great. One with a few more updates, and I feel that this could get there. The racing feels fun, fluid, the visuals at times look stunning, but for me, the audio and lack of modes to play with friends is a letdown. While I also commend the mix of water and tarmac all in one game, it doesn't always feel like it works. If, however, you're looking for a fun arcade racer to bring back that 90s nostalgia and are happy to play on your own, then certainly give this one a look and pick it up. For me, a solid enough 7.5 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for supporting this channel. I really hope you've enjoyed this review. And if you have, why not hit the thumbs up? And listen, if you're new here, why not think about subscribing? We make lots of reviews, gameplay videos, and features. I'm going to put a selection up above now. You can choose, have a look at some of our other videos if you so desire. For all of those that are existing subscribers, thank you so much for your support. Always means a lot. Let's discuss down below in the comments section. What do you think of this game? Is this one that you're looking to purchase? And what is your favorite racer out there? Arcade racers only. My name is Juan Romero from Switchwatch. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Take care.